School gardens are wonderful places for kids to connect with their food. Likely one third of students in this sort of age group will perhaps get diabetes, certainly fall in that obesity range. So we do have health concerns and having a place like this that allows them to connect with the source of their food and perhaps food that is a healthy whole food option, fruits, vegetables, berries, herbs, you know, that will give them the taste for that at least. Um, and in, you know, be, be a friendly space for all different kids to connect with. Well, this is John Newberry's Edible School Garden that we're in right now. And uh, it started as a vegetable garden so that the kids could learn where their food really comes from. And uh, eventually so that the teachers would be able to use the school garden as an experiential learning tool so kids could actually come out get their hands in the dirt um, maybe do science in the garden some math in the garden uh, you can do reading in the garden so really it's it's a model place for the kids to learn about some very important lessons where does their food really come from if I grow it, maybe I'll like to taste it, and maybe I'll choose to eat vegetables a bit more, which has wonderful health, long-lasting health effects if you can get kids hooked on to eating their vegetables. Because a child is invested in the time and energy it takes to grow a vegetable, they definitely will want to taste it. Um, that enthusiasm and that willingness to try something new that they're not used to seeing on their own table is worth its weight in gold. And that's how we get so many children to be interested in eating fresh peas right off of the vine or something new on the school menu that we've been able to buy locally. Well, this fall I saw, you know, this really cool connection that they made between the work that they did out there, the plants that they grew, and then the food that they ate at lunch because it was the first time that they harvested kale, lettuce, spinach, arugula and gave it to the cooks in the lunchroom and said this is what we grew, can you put it in the salad and then the next day they came, it was washed, it was beautiful and it was part of the school salad so and it had a little sign that said Foothills Garden and they were really proud and so that's really powerful for them to you know see that their work goes into feeding the kids at our school. A lot of the kids don't really understand what's involved with food growing. Um, tomatoes appear at the supermarket and um, I think it's important for them to have it, at least an awareness that food is a product that many hands contribute to. I think having some kind of awareness as to like the life cycle of food is good for them. We are are, as a society, I think are going down this path of monoculture farms. It seems like our food is created in a laboratory anymore, and we're forgetting about, you know, we can just put a seed in the ground and, and have something to eat if we need it. For me, personally, it's, a, it's kind of an outlet. It's a stress relief, and it's a way to, to be around other people. You know, like my daughters share time with me in the garden, you know, it's, it's a way to kind of connect. It was, it really was the parents. They really wanted that for their kids. And, you know, the minute I started talking to kids about it here, they were like, yeah, that sounds like fun. I'll do that. As far as keeping the kids engaged, I don't think there's a child or a teacher on the planet who wouldn't rather be outside playing in the dirt than inside at a desk. So this provides an opportunity for a new environment for them. Uh, it's a nice way to bring in those multiple intelligences and let different kids shine. You know, in seventh grade, we teach ecology. Um, we teach we teach about plants, but they end up growing plants in little cups and little lighthouses inside a building. So, you know, I do it outside. It's a matter of getting support. You know, it's a matter of getting the right people involved and. Uh, finding people who will be able to stick with it because this is all volunteer. Okay, ready? Okay, I'm 
there are a lot of people who are pretty enthusiastic about building a garden. There are many uh, groups in any community, I would say. You can, you can try to connect with rotary groups. You can connect, as I mentioned earlier, with master gardeners. Sometimes even the hardware stores and other things will donate supplies for you to build the garden. Just, just build it. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> it doesn't have to be amazing. Um, you can do it the old-fashioned way with watering cans and. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be this big flashy. Thanks. Some school gardens are awesome and amazing and make me lust after them and wish they were my own. But it doesn't have to be that. And um, make use of whatever limited resources you have, whether it's like, I mean, that's so tiny. That's like 100 square feet. And there's so much that can be grown in 100 square feet. Definitely do your research. It's important that you have someone with gardening experience who can help to decide the best placement for the garden. You want to make sure you get enough sun. Um, you have a plan. You have a plan for how you are going to sustain that garden. Here they come. Green thumbs, green thumbs. Hold them out for me. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you.